Some of them, they pray. They're always in the masjid. But where's the problem? Once again, it's not what country they come from, their color. They don't understand the deen of Allah. They fall into something that take them of Islam. The Sheikh said, هذا أمر خطير وموقف دقيق يحتاج إلى بصيرة نافذة يحصل بها الفرقان بين الحق والباطل والهدي والضلال. He said, this matter is very serious and we should all take it seriously. You need to know the nullifiers of Islam. This is only uh, one of the khutbahs of Sheikh Fawzan. It's very summarized and abridged. However, there is other books that talks about things that nullify one's Islam. Like the great book of Sheikh al-Islam, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he has a book called Nawaqid al-Islam. And it's translated into English. Actually, is it explained by this noble sheikh, Al-Allama Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan? And you can find it is translated as well as well. You get that book, you may even find it on Amazon. Who knows? Try. There is a lot of books on Amazon, alhamdulillah, of Islamic books, of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. And then you get that book, the explanation of. Ten, because Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad al Wahab, he chose ten, if I'm not mistaken, right? Ten of them. Uh, Sheikh Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned is many of them, not just ten. However, is this Sheikh Fawzan says so this? These are just the main ten, destructive ones. There is other ones, but at least we learn those ten ones. They so dangerous, but still some people are falling into them. Now he says you need to have knowledge. Sound knowledge with no ambiguity in it. So that you have that knowledge that enable you to know the truth from falsehood. They're not going to be mixed. Now you're on the truth, but you don't know if it's true or falsehood. Somebody, because he can talk a little bit more and eloquent, can mix, mix you up. Now you don't even know what's going on. Likewise, you have to have that insight and that sound knowledge that guidance and misguidance, they are clear to you because they are opposite. They are opposite. The same way, you know day and night, right or wrong. You know the day and night, but sometimes you don't know, especially in the winter. Winter, mashallah, by 11 a.m., she looks like it's maghrib, right or wrong sometimes. You didn't even pray dhuhr yet. Lights are already on, especially in some countries. In Europe, I was in Europe. I spent like a year or so in Belgium, years ago. Yeah, subhanAllah, the winter over there is amazing. You don't know day from night, Akhi, for a couple of months. You don't know. Like I said, you pray in Dhuhr, it's like you pray in Isha. They have lights on all the time. It's dark. All time for a long time. You don't know. You don't see the sun. It's amazing. But alhamdulillah, but with the clocks now and the watches, you know. <laughs> Can you imagine no watches, no clocks? You don't even know what's going on. If somebody falls asleep and woke up in the middle, I don't know. You don't even know if it's night or day. You can't say, I got, I got up in the middle of the night. You look out the windows, all the cars have lights on. All the lights of the streets, they're always on. The, 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 the homes, always. If you don't turn on the light, you don't see nothing in your house. Lights are already on in the stores. It's, it looks like it's always night. So you need to have something like, alhamdulillah, in this case, the one you look at the clock and it says 11 a.m. You know it's still day, okay? Somebody who have no watches is going to be confused. They don't even know where they at. That's why the Sheikh said you have to have that knowledge. You cannot just say, Alhamdulillah, we all Muslims, mashallah, any masjid I go to, we all good, all the mashayikh, all the imams are good brothers. Who says that? All the imams or the masjid. There are people who call to the haq, there are people who call to something else. We're not going to say whether those who call to the falsehood, 
because they do it on purpose. Allah alam, we don't know what's in the hearts of the people. But you need to know that they call to falsehood, stay away from. Don't say, well, they, have, they, they mean good. Good intention is not enough. All right, somebody don't pray, and you say, he prays, hey, I have good intentions. Allah. One day, it's not going to help him. The same way if you hire someone to come and do some work in your house and you give them, especially if you give them the money, and then he never show up. And whenever you see him, say, Akhi, job. Akhi, I'm coming. I have a good intention, brother. What are you going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, forget about that. You have a good intention. Alhamdulillah, you got me on that one. Innam al Yes, yes, a This is how you're going to look at the thing? Your house is going to stay like that. It's never going to, nothing going to be done if that person is going to use that on you, you know, that excuse. You say, listen, I think good intention, that's between you and your Lord. Me, I'm not paying you for your good intention. I'm paying you for your good work. <laughs> good intention is between you and your Lord. Good work is between you and me. I don't, I don't know what's in your mind, what's in your heart. I just want you to do what you said you will do. That's all I want. I'm not going to even involve with your intention or not. That's for you to decide between you and your Lord. That's between you and Allah. Allah, he's the one who knows what's in the house, not me. Unless if you tell me what you're planning to do, now we can talk. Alhamdulillah. So it's very important, ya khwan. You have to have knowledge so that matters can become clear to you. قال كثيرا ما يلتبس هذا الموقف على كثير من الناس بسبب جهله بنواقد الإسلام وسبب الردة. So some people, subhanallah, they, this matter is not clear to them at all. Confused and matters of the things. They don't know this is from Islam, not from Islam. Sometimes people don't want shirk and they're like, no, it's okay, brother. It's okay. If you don't like it, just go somewhere else. It's not about me. about you? You're doing these acts of shirk. I don't want it for you because that's what we Muslims, we care about others. Ahlul Sunnah, arhamu bin arhamu nas bil khalq. Ahlul Sunnah, yes, they're supposed to be the ones that have more knowledge because you're people of Sunnah. But also they have mercy on the people. They want good for them. When they see someone is upon error, they talk to them, they advise them, they call them to the truth. They're going to accept or not? That's another thing. Hidayatu tawfiq hadihi lillah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a lot of people, subhanAllah, they just don't know. Why? Because they don't have knowledge of these things that the ulama, they say, nawaqid al-Islam. The things that nullify one's Islam. Person is not even on Islam. Even though that person, as the Sheikh says, mahsoobun al-Muslim. He's counted with the Muslims. Because they don't know these things that Nullah found in Islam, they don't know the means that lead to apostasy. فَيَظُنُّ أَنَّ مَنْ أَدَّ شَيْئًا مِنْ شَعَارِ الْإِسْلَامِ سَارَ مُسْلِمًا وَلَوْ ارْتَكَبَ شَيْئًا وَالْمُكَفِّرَاتِ So there are certain people, they believe that if any person is doing some acts of, of Islam, like they pray, made hajj, fast, they Muslims. Doesn't matter what they do. Even if they fall into one of the things that nullify one's Islam, they're like, listen, man, the man, he just prayed with us. Yeah, but he believe in the graves and he make dua and he supplicate and invoke them instead of Allah. Person go to the magicians and believe them. is one of the nawaqad al-Islam as well. Yeah, that's between, what they say to you. That's between him and his Lord, brother. Man, he made salat with us, and he just came from Hajj. He's a Muslim. Yeah, but he, after Hajj, he just came from the Sahir. Who he himself is a magician. This man is Sahir. They're like that's between him and his Lord. We're not going to interfere. It's not interfering. He's telling the people, look, the action that you're doing is very dangerous action and takes person out of Islam. It doesn't matter salat and Hajj and because the matter is very serious. قال وهذا الظن الفاسد إنما نشأ من الجهل بحقيقة الإسلام وما يناقضه. Said this, this uh, corrupt belief 
Everybody, mashallah, is a Muslim as long as if they pray, fast Ramadan, this is it, they Muslim, even if they fall into things that usually nullify one's Islam, they're like, doesn't matter, they Muslims. He said, this is a corrupt way of seeing things. So why these people are look at things this way? He says, because of ignorance. They don't know the reality of Islam. Just Muslims by affiliation, by association, they don't know the true Islam, and they don't know what nullify Islam. Okay? It's not enough to just be Muslim by affiliation or by association. For instance, those Muslims who they just born in a Muslim country, like even Saudi Arabia, you think just because a person was born in Mecca or Medina, mashallah, they're in Jannah? Who told you that? <coughs> you think just because people, they live in Mecca and Medina, mashallah. No, it's a good thing. No doubt, this is the best places, Mecca and Medina. There's a lot of virtues, a lot of opportunities in there, but for those who are upon Tawheed, upon Sunnah, just because a person lives in Mecca and Medina, this is it, they from the people of Jannah, la. they have to apply Islam correctly and live it in their lives and stay away from the thing that nullifies one's Islam. A Sufi Qubori who believes that his sheikh who died like three, four hundred years ago, for example, knows what's in the unseen. He's the one who sent down rain. Nothing happened without that sheikh approval. That sheikh who died some years ago, hundreds, he can still cure the dead, the sick people now. And he's the one that women can call upon him to give, to, to give them boys or girls to get pregnant. But then this person, he lives in Mecca. And then he said, no, mashallah, Allah, Akbar. He said, nah, this is a big problem. He said, it's not enough to just be a Muslim by affiliation without knowing the reality of Islam. He said, an ignorant person, just Muslim by affiliation and association, does not benefit from Islam. Does not benefit from Islam. Islam then the Sheikh said, How can a person apply the teachings of Al Islam if he's ignorant of those teachings? He don't even know what it is. How are you gonna apply them? Wahada Waqi on Mu'lim Ya Ishu Kathiru min and Nas fi Asrina Hada Mimala you may use one about Al Hakri wal Batil wal Huda wat Dulad wat Dalal Afwan. Sheikh Sarah Al Fodani said, This is a sad and painful reality. That many people in our in our era they they are they live in this is their case. They don't have no criterion what they they can't distinct distinguish between the truth and falsehood. They can't distinguish between guidance and misguidance. Said so this category of people. Everybody is a Muslim for them. Anybody who performs some of the acts of worship of Al-Islam, he's a Muslim, even if that person fall into a thousand nullifier of Al-Islam. He said, but he's still Muslim with them. Why? He prays. He say, La ilaha illallah. There are things that nullify that. No. Can we leave questions to the end, inshallah? Zakla. Qal wa lam ya'lam ha'ulai anna man idda'a al-Islam wa marasa ba'da al-ibadat thumma artakaba shay'an min nawaqid al-Islam fa huwa bimathabati man yatawadda thumma yuhdit fa hal yabqa li wudu'ihi athar. Sheikh, he gave a beautiful example. He says, now those people, this category here that the Sheikh is talking about, the ignorant people about Islam, who believe that, look, if your name is a Muslim name and, mashallah, you pray, fast Ramadan, you're a Muslim, even if that person is falling into things that nullifies their Islam, 
He says the Sheikh, he says, look, this is the example of someone 